Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. I'm Safir. In this session, we are going to talk about regional trade agreements. So uh, we have already discussed about uh, WTO. So if you see, that's a kind of multilateralism. That is a kind of globalization. So there is nothing like regional trade agreements. When we talk about regional trade agreements, like in a particular region or between two countries like ASEAN, etc., right, within Asia. So that is a kind of, uh, you know, regional setup, a broader concept, I mean, a narrow concept. But when we discussed about WTO, it's a much wider concept, right? So one is related to globalization and the other is related to a kind of regional setup, regionalism kind of setup. So here I'm going to talk about regionalism. What are the advantages and what are the disadvantages and how this regional trade agreements can actually complement the globalization process also multilateralism. So ultimately the objective is multilateralism, right? That means uh, a promotion of trade across the world so how these regional trade agreements can contribute or can supplement the idea of multilateralism also I'll discuss. So let's try to understand first what is the main difference between this regionalism and the multilateralism, right? So I hope this thing is very clear when I talk about multilateralism, one clear example in front of you is like globalization or WTO. So the objective of WTO is to promote multilateralism. An objective of certain regional trade agreements is related to regionalism. Promoting the trade in a region like ASEAN is a perfect example for that. Okay, so let's discuss about regional trade agreements. So, uh, and before that, let me uh, explain what is this difference between multilateralism versus regionalism so if you see multilateralism is a much broader and wider concept and regionalism is a very narrow concept multilateralism is all about globalization so multilateralism is like a wto is a clear cut example right so here there will be now if you look into the advantages of multilateralism there will be a comparative advantage so this we have discussed when we talked about uh, wto so there is going to be a comparative advantage productivity will increase production will increase because the trade is increasing. So obviously production will increase and automatically since there is a competition, there is a, a possibility, there is a, uh, the good thing is that the efficiency, the firms will try to improve the efficiency because only the efficient firms or the countries will survive, right? The fittest will survive. That is the situation. That is a logical conclusion if there is any competition. So competition is high. So the fittest will survive. Like when it comes to your exam also, when there is high competition, only the fittest will survive, only the most efficient will survive, only those people who use their time most efficiently and resources will survive, others won't survive in this uh, system. So this will increase production, this will increase uh, productivity, this will increase efficiency, this will increase pro profitability, and all these are the advantages if you see. And that lead to optimum use of or optimum use of or use of resources or optimum resource allocation optimum resource allocation right but what is the issue issue is vulnerability and especially when it comes to the developing countries and least developed countries there is a vulnerability because you are exposed to a lot of things you are exposed to the world so something happens anywhere across the world it may affect your economic situations also so there is a high vulnerability which is attached to it so if you can take care of some preventive measures for that then this is something which is considered good com com comparing with the advantages especially that you are getting in this particular situation so the issue that you can talk about is vulnerability like we are vulnerable when we are opening up our economy right whatever happens outside you can see even the 2008 crisis it has happened in us but still we are affected very much badly although we were able to you know reduce the damage but still we affected very badly and what happened to our stock market and what happened to our economic situations and all uh, is very clear, right? So vulnerability. Okay, so as per economic theory, developing countries will basically benefit because there will be an equalization, right? So see guys, like it's like this, the, the, everything is now going to be clubbed together and everything is kept opened up. So developing countries is also supposed to get a lot of advantage here because of the equalization effect. So I'll just write here, equalization will happen. 
so things from there will keep on flowing to this direction right so that is actually the advantage so this is what the advantage especially for developing countries what is regionalism it is a narrow concept and it is basically based on the theory of custom union uh, given by jacob wines okay so uh, the effect of regional trade agreement there are mainly two effect first it can create trade i'll explain what is this so let let me explain what are the two effect okay so it can create trade and secondly it can lead to diversion of trade or trade diversion okay so when I, when i talk about it can create trade it will also lead to resource allocation on the basis of comparative advantage within the region and that will improve efficiency but global level is better now let me tell you how it can actually create the trade but first i'll explain how it can divert the trade then it is very easy to understand how it is good leading to trade diversion let's talk about two countries a b okay one more country c so let's say uh, a commodity let's say this pen uh, the commodity the price is let's say 10 rupee and the price is let's say 7 rupee and the price is let's say here 6 rupee so imagine in a normal situation if a country a want to import this or let's say another country who want or in country a it cost higher the price is higher so if the country a want to import this from where the country a will import it it will import from c in a normal situation imagine there is no custom duty there is nothing no agreements nothing so if this is a situation you will get at a price of 6 rupee from c so you will import from c perfect because that is better for you and you won't think of p because b it cost you 7 so normal situation the trade is between a and c now imagine there is some duty which is attached okay so like custom duty which is attached let's say 2 rupee so equally to both country like country b and country c so i am country a i i keep a custom duty uh on both country equally because i don't have any preference for any country so equally i am attaching duty that means this cost will become 9 rupee because 2 rupee added and this cost will become 8 rupee still it is better than the cost here so you will import still you will import from where you will import from c so there will be a trade between a and c even in this case also so there is no duties which is attached there is trade between a and c equal duty which is attached still there is trade between a and c now imagine a situation that a and b have an agreement free trade agreement so a and b have a free trade agreement means between them it is free trade there is no duties which is attached so what will be the price if you import from b it will remain as 7 rupee because the price there it is the same 7 rupee but there is no such agreement with c so you will go for some trade barriers means some custom duty will be attached on that let's say 2 rupee itself and this will or 3 rupee so this will bring the price to 9 rupee here so this will tell you how the trade diversion actually happen normal situation the trade would have between a and c and if there is an equal tariff which is imposed or a restriction which is imposed till the trade would have been between a and c but now since there is a free trade between a and b and a tax or the custom duty which is imposed upon c and now c import from c getting expensive because of the free trade between a and b so what has happened is the trade was normally between a and c now you will not be going for c because this is getting 9 rupee you are getting it from 7 rupee from you are getting it at 7 rupee from b so now the trade is diverted from a and c to a and b so this is what i mean by this lead to trade diversion why this has happened because of the free trade or because of the regional trade agreement between a and b if that agreement was not there this will become most ex more expensive what is the disadvantage of this guys if you look into this who is most efficient in this is it b or c c is more efficient what how can you understand efficiency efficiency can be understood in terms of cost of production per unit cost of production who is producing in a better cost c is producing at a better cost of 6 rupee 
B is producing at seven rupees. So the most efficient form is six. Uh, the C here or the company or the country is six here. But because of the free trade agreement, you are going to B. So the most efficiency have nothing to do here. So this is one of the disadvantage. I I would say it is a trade distortion or a trade diversion. It should have between A and C, and C is efficient. C is giving at a better price if there is no duty or even if there is an equal duty. But since there is a free trade agreement or there is a regional trade agreement, there is an agreement between A and B. The trade is diverted. Why this trade is diverted? Only because of that agreement. If that agreement was not there, it should not have happened. That's why I have told you there is a trade diversion effect. Now. Secondly, it will create trade also. How is it going to create trade? Let's talk about the same situation: A, B, and C. A, let's say price of another commodity. Let's say, uh, yeah, any anything. Let's say price is let's say five rupee, and the price here is let's say four rupee. And C, let's say it is four rupee. Okay. So now before, so guys, if you look into this now, uh, price is five in country A. Four and four each. Okay, they are both giving you at four rupee. Now, will you be importing from any of these countries? No, because there will be some duties which will be attached. Definitely, at least one rupee. Imagine if you are attaching one rupee and one rupee, it will cost you something like five, and it will cost you something like five. So now, is there any point in importing it when you are getting when you are locally producing at five and you are getting it at five? What is the point in importing at five rupee? Why you are paying four x unnecessarily? You won't do that. So there is no trade in this situation. Even if a minimal duty of one rupee is there, it can be two rupee, it can be three rupee. Then it will become more expensive. Also, importing become expensive. Even if it is equal, you won't import. Forget about getting it expensive. So there is actually no trade between A, B, C now. Okay. Now imagine a situation that you have signed a free trade agreement between A and B. So as of now, there is no trade. Now you signed an agreement with A and B. So what will happen? This duty will be taken away. Now, because of this agreement, the cost will come down to four rupee because there is exact cost of this you will be getting because there is no uh, duty which is which is attached. Now, in your country, it is costing you let's say five, and now you are getting from B at four rupee. Will you import it? Yes, you will be importing it. So, what actually happened here? There is a trade creation. Otherwise, there was no trade between A B or A C. Now, just because of this agreement, a trade have created. So, regional trade agreement two effect that I have discussed is trade creation effect like this and trade dis trade diversion effect. Okay, perfect. I hope this will explain uh, what we have discussed here. So, guys, let's look into the next one. So, what is the government stand? The government stand, or in fact, what we need or what is desirable is multilateralism. It is not uh, bilateralism or it is not uh, regionalism. We are looking for multilateralism. We need to promote global trade, and we need to bring down the trade barriers and everything by protecting our interest. But regional trade agreements or these bilateralism are the way forward for you know uh, multilateralism because the advantage is when you have such kind of agreement with your local uh, you know regional uh, grouping, then you will be getting a bargaining power also at the higher level. When you go further, this group will. It becomes solid rock, right? And they will be supporting you, and this is going to give you some bargaining power at the higher level when you go for WTO negotiations and everything. So this is actually considered good. This is actually a way forward to multilateralism by keeping our interest intact. Perfect. So this is how you should be writing your answer. We need to go for multilateralism. There is no doubt. Government stand is also multilateralism, but protecting our interest for that, we need some kind of. You know, regional grouping, so that will get more bargaining power. Okay, let's write one line over there. The priority is always multilateralism, and regionalism is to supplement this multilateralism. And you can see in the last couple of decades, we have signed a lot of uh, regional trade agreements, and it is consistently increasing and substantially. We have signed a lot of regional trade agreement. Okay, because. Uh, uh, we have discussed right about the Doha development round, the Doha ministerial conference. A lot of issues has been discussed by the developing countries, and the uh, you know negotiations got stuck, and there is no move right because there is no consensus in WTO. There is no possibility of consensus because there is a two block which has been created: developed country on one side, developing and, and least developed countries on the other side. 
and if the decisions are taken on the basis of majority obviously the decisions will come in the favor of developing countries because developing countries are in majority and if the decisions are taken on the basis of shareholding then it should have been in the favor of developed countries because they have the maximum shareholding right in terms of world gdp and all those things but here in wto the decisions are neither on the basis of uh, uh, you know uh, strength or majority nor on the basis of share it should be on the basis of consensus and what we have seen and observed is the issues which has been picked up by developing countries in the doha ministerial conference or the doha development round that is actually not accepted and uh, a lot of issues are going on a lot of discussions and negotiation are going on and there is no consensus upon that and the doha got stuck still going on the issues so outside doha round we have to make some kind of agreement so since doha issues are going on already and there is no conclusion which has been there so we are trying to go for a lot of regional trade agreement and we are trying to make our sides very strong so once you are strong with the backup of you know you know your regional uh, countries and the countries with the equal interest then you will be getting a much higher bargaining power to move forward in future so let's look into the advantages of regional trade agreement something like uh, you you guys can write it because if it is, it is going to be a mains question they will not be asking you what are the advantages so i'll just uh, discuss it quickly you can take it down it's your choice otherwise you can just stop the video here that's it it's over the concept is discussed now the advantage and disadvantage and the trends is what i'm going to discuss all right so flexible and mutually beneficial terms because it is between two countries or three countries or four countries it is not between 180 or 170 countries or 100 countries so it is flexible easy negotiation possible coming with a consensus is very much possible right and you can change your terms and condition easily and it will be mutually respectable also because three four five six countries or even 10 countries it is easy to discuss negotiate and to reach a consensus so that is why it is flexible and beneficial for all second political or strategic advantages what is that just before i have told it will increase your bargaining power just right there that is it increase bargaining power of member countries in international forums like wto g20 etc and uh, one more thing that i have discussed again already it supplement the multilateralism or supplement multilateral trading system it supplement multilateral trading system now what are the disadvantage it will create a kind of regional setup obviously the disadvantage is also you can write the doubtful welfare effect due to trade diversion i have told you two effect it will create trade that is good but it will divert trade also that is not considered desirable because you are snatching it from the most efficient to least efficient right so what is actually happening if you see here this guy is efficient and this guy is not efficient so when you are having a free trade agreement with that least efficient guy what is actually happening you are snatching something from the better better one okay so that is not considered desirable so trade diversion is there because of this so doubtful welfare effect due to the trade diversion next is noodle ball effect because you are making a lot of regional trade agreements and it's just like getting like a noodle ball right noodle ball effect that is large number of regional trade agreements leads to overlaps in terms conditions complications and increases the transaction cost etc so you are signing with a lot of different countries and a lot of regional trade agreements and see let's say india and uh, one or x and y is sign x and y and z have signed one agreement then again x y a b signing another agreement so here there are terms and condition here there are terms and condition but you can see x and y is common here x and y is common here sometimes this terms and condition in this agreement and this agreement may vary but then there will be complications and that will lead to a lot of issues okay so that is one of the issue so if something which is there common like wto then that is going to be good okay what are the trends as i have told you just before the trend is last two you know decades since especially the doha development round since we are not able to reach any consensus or any conclusion substantially increasing we are signing regional trade agreements with many countries so that is the main trend just write few lines over there regional trade participation has accelerated over time it increased substantially in the last couple of decades 
India's regional trade agreements have doubled to 42 since mid 2000s. The reason, if you want, you can write in bracket the deadlock in Doha Ministerial Conference or Doha Development Round. Just write Doha Development Round. Okay. Bilateral agreements between two countries, bilateral agreements have been consolidated into plurilateral agreements either via accession or negotiation between existing RTAs, regional trade agreements or free trade agreements. Next one, inter-regional regional trade agreements are increasing within region or between region also. Like intra-region means like Asia, within Asia, like ASEAN, if you see, this is intra-region. Inter-region means between like Asia and Africa. So between them also increasing. What is the advantage? Resource allocation, right? Because Africa may have a better resources and uh, resource allocation can be, you know, you can make optimal use of resource allocation. If you want, you can write the advantage in this, in the bracket. Resource allocation will be diverse. Different types of resources are available, okay? One more line you can write, most of the regional trade agreements are free trade agreements. Guys, again, when I say free trade agreement, it is not completely free. It is equal, to, it is close to free, okay? But still there will be restriction. We can't keep everything free. There will be restrictions. Next one, scope of regional trade agreements is consistently expanding. Scope of regional trade agreements is consistently expanding. That is, these are increasing, increasingly including trade in services, trade in services, investment measures, intellectual property, dispute resolution, etc. So, guys, what I'm saying is the scope of RTAs is increasing. See, why this RTAs? It is because of deadlock in Doha ground. So, you already know these issues are already there and discussed in WTO. Right. So we have to bring in those also in the regional trade agreement, like intellectual property, investment measures, agricultural aspect, environmental aspect, and all these things are already brought in in the regional trade agreement also. Okay. Next point, mega regional trade agreements are negotiated like RCEP, TTP, okay, TTIP, etc. I'll be discussing all these mega regional trade agreements. That is going to be the next session. Now we need to discuss the types of regional trade agreement, like preferential trade agreement, we will discuss, and then free trade agreement, custom union, common market, economic union, etc. We will have to cover. Comprehensive economic cooperation agreement, that is what this one, or comprehensive economic partnership agreement, CEPA, CECA. CECA means cooperation. Something which is more is what partnership. So this is what I'll be discussing in the next session. So right now, my objective was to tell you what is multilateralism, what is uh, you know uh, regional trade agreements, what is bilateralism, etc. What are the advantages in both case and how regional trade agreement can create trade as well as divert trade. What are the advantages and how it complement or supplement the objective of multilateralism or WTO at the same time. What are the disadvantages? Noodle ball effect is one of the most, that, that thing that you need to remember, you should be writing exactly the same. It is going to add value to you because they know, they'll come to know you are, you mean business then. Okay. So guys, I hope you understood the session, whatever we have discussed. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and uh, any questions you can comment below. Consider subscribing the channel also guys. Thank you. See you in the next session.